If you had radiofrequency ablation for low back pain in the last few days, and now you have back pain and possibly even leg pain that's worse than before the procedure, stop the panic. This happens a lot. It's temporary. And there are some simple things we can do to get you through. I'll explain why this is happening and when you need to act today on Best Practice. According to my colleague, Dr. Anne Cherie Fox, who's a board certified pain management specialist, soreness after RFA is to be expected since the procedure involves placing a needle in the back, the neck, or even the knee. However, just like other injections, that soreness really should resolve within a few days. There are three reasons why you may experience new back pain and even leg pain after radiofrequency ablation. First, muscle spasm. When the pain management doctor burned your nerves, they also burned a fair amount of muscle fibers. That wasn't the goal, but muscle is the medial branch nerve's neighbor in your low back. As you might imagine, your muscle doesn't appreciate being burned and it responds the only way it knows how to get back at you, spasm. Second, nerve irritation. Radio frequency ablation burns the medial branch nerve without cutting it. So if the medial branch is injured but still functioning, it's gonna do what medial branches do, which is send a pain signal straight to the brain. The pain from a medial branch is mostly to the side in your spine. It radiates off into your buttocks. It feels like it's coming from your hip and it even burns in the leg. This is the same pain that you had before the procedure but it's potentially even worse now. You must realize that as your body recovers from the procedure, this pain is also expected to resolve entirely on its own. Finally, third, and fortunately least common, is radiculopathy. Pain coming from the spinal nerve root itself. This, this type of pain is usually what we refer to as sciatica, and it can be horribly severe. The spinal nerve root is just millimeters away from the medial branch, and so the proximity of the radio frequency electrode often causes the nerve root to be irritated by the RFA procedure itself. Again, this is irritation, and it's therefore temporary. It can last two and sometimes even three days. Scary, but temporary. If you're going through this right now, I'm so sorry, I know it hurts, but try to remember that RFA has a strong record of relieving 80% of back pain in 60% of the people treated for an average duration of 10 months. That's pretty good. Pain right after RFA is not a sure sign of failure, but you do need to control the pain to get on while your body heals. So within 24 hours of the procedure, try ice it reduces the swelling and inflammation from the procedure itself. By the next day, transition to moist heat from a soaking tub, a hot shower, or even warm, moist packs. It works wonders for sore muscles. For those who already have a chiropractor or have done acupuncture in the past, this may be a good time for another treatment. When medications are desired, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, think Aleve and ibuprofen, as well as muscle relaxants, Flexeril, are good first-line options for back pain. Avoid narcotics, Percocet, Vicodin, Codeine. In addition to being a strong predictor of failed RFA, they're dangerous. My colleague, Dr. Fox, also cautions her patients, if it feels like something more than muscle soreness, bring it up to your physician for further evaluation. I agree. If the pain persists after RFA, check back with your pain management doctor. Everyone is different, but we can all expect a good result with time and proper care. If you have a question you would like answered on Best Practice Live, click the link to our website and complete the submission form. The more information you can give us, the better we can answer your question. So please contact us and we can walk you through uploading your imaging to a secure server. Please like and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with information about your spine and joint health.